Hey, this is John. Welcome to the beginning of the Desert RTS tutorial project. It's a new series for building a multiplayer real-time strategy game from the beginning with a uh, lockstep framework. The Templar on GitHub suggested that uh, we build a basic real-time strategy game, but later on in the series, you might work on cool features like uh, resource mining, unit building, and even special abilities. Uh, so to start off, we're going to um, open up Unity, create a new project, which I've already done to save time, um, and then import these two packages. Uh, Desert RTS pack is uh, just contains some art that I put in a folder um, uh, for this project, and you should be able to find the download link in the video description. Lockstep Framework is from the Lockstep Framework repository on GitHub. You can uh, clone it, download it, and then just get it into your project. Um, so to start off, we're going to uh, make a folder for R, as soon as this right click works, we're going to make a folder for uh, our code, our scenes specifically, um, that we're adding to this project. So let's just call this main actually. And then let's create a folder for the scenes. Um, and then we can save the scene we have, just a random new scene. Um, save it to that folder and we'll call it main scene. Um, so yeah, very basic just setting up the, the project. Now this scene has nothing in it right now. Um, so just to make, just to set up the basics, we're going to actually go into Lockstep Framework's example scene. Just search uh, example scene and you should find it. It's in the uh, Lockstep folder and um, copy the manager game object and then go back to main scene and we're going to paste that in um, so that we have kind of a template to work off of so we don't have to set all of this up um, by hand. Um, now we're going to uh, create a terrain, yes. And it's just a ground so we can better visualize uh, the simulation um, for units to walk on and I just don't like looking at empty space so uh, let's use the texture included in desert RTS pack call it sand albedo and now we have pretty floor to work on um, now if you notice here a lot of there's a lot of uh, buttons that say no database loaded you can either uh, go to the database window through here or just click this open it up for us and I'm going to put it right here um, so uh, unfold the database settings and um, what we're going to do for now, we're just going to load the example database. Uh, navigate to Lockstep Framework, example, and then example database and example database.asset. Load that up. Uh, so now, as you can see here in the inspector, um, the values uh, became or refreshed. And uh, this is actually, refer for example, this uh, test agent is referencing the test agent item in the database, um, which has a, uh, a reference or value um, pointing to the test agent prefab, which will get spawned. Anyways, uh, more on that later. Point is right now we are ready to run. Uh, first, let's hit scan and save to make sure we're synced up with the scene. Oh, actually, um, let's set this layer to ground. If you uh, don't have, already have this layer created, set it to ground that way um, the height map scanner will scan correctly but more on that later um, hit scan and save and then if you want you can just run the project and we're good to go okay our camera is a little goofy but we can change that easily And uh, yeah, this is pretty much just a copy of example scene with the new terrain. Um, but we have a scene that's ready to go, that's ready to run lockstep. Now let's make a, our own custom unit for a project. Let's call this unit infantry because it's, it's going to be an infantry unit. And we're going to add a buttload of components. So LS agent, which, is, which uh, makes it uh, an agent that can be spawned in. Um, let's add move we'll, to allow it to move and set the acceleration a little higher because one is just absurdly 
low uh, for the maximum speed. Um, scan so I could scan in the pack. We're going to make sure that we um, have a projectile code. We're just going to use test bullet already defined here and create it in the example scene. Um, and then we're going to add health so it can take bullets and die um, and then turn uh, to make sure our unit turns. We're also going to add Alice animator um, so that uh, we can animate the model that we're going to add soon. Uh, make sure you set the shape and unity LS body to circle uh, so that it has like you so at the moment um, circles are the only uh, collider type that's supported for um, moving units uh, just because the code is much more complicated for um, like polygons turning around and hitting each other uh, but if that's a feature that you need let me know um, okay so we're going to find a model for this and we're going to go into the art uh, folder the models folder navigate the soldier and just uh, grab this guy right here drag him on and I believe that the model is a little small so just scale that up to 50 times and then um, now we're going to hook up the animations with LS animator so uh, we're going to look for these three values. They're um, idle, shoot, and move. And we're going to reference them here. Fire is like the actual shoot animation, while engaging is uh, maybe the posture a soldier takes, like aiming uh, down his rifle. Um, but we're going to, we don't have one for that uh, on this model, so we're just going to leave that uh, to the default. Um, you can put any value in this. If it doesn't find the animation, it's not going to do anything with it. Okay, so now uh, we have to make this infantry guy into a prefab. His very own prefab. So let's create a new folder called units and drag infantry in here. And then what we're going to do is reference the prefab inside an item in the database. So uh, we can just drag and drop in the game object and automatically set the name. And the reason why we do this is because uh, Lockset Framework has to spawn units in deterministically. Um, it has to control the entire process. Otherwise, um, there might be room for like, um, yeah, uh, a certain game object um, not, not being pulled correctly or respawn correctly. It's uh, just easier to manage it all through a database system. Um, so uh, we can change our agent code to infantry. And uh, this will basically it'll spawn the same way, except it's going to spawn our units instead of the example units, the test agents. Um, so we can save this, run it, and see what happens. Oh, we should really uh, adjust the camera um, outside of runtime to slow it saves. Okay. So here we have it. Let's have them kill each other. So you can see the, the animations are hooked up. Um and control the units just like uh standard RTS controls. Split them up. Alright. So those are our infantry units. Um let's play around with them. How about let's uh, take advantage of auto spawners, auto command feature, uh, set the, so auto command will basically, it'll spawn these units and I'll tell them to go to the center. And we're gonna type in 100 value. I don't know if it'll run on my computer just cause uh, I didn't, I use my laptop uh, here or my uh, tower, my desktop here. So I have a crappy little laptop um, that's also trying to record the stream, but we'll see what happens. And we didn't change the camera again. Oh well. Now oh, we're missing the fight. And that's it. All these units are trying to go at it, hack each other. I'm actually curious who wins. It looks like the health is set a little high, so they're dying pretty slowly. I believe uh, 
Yeah, the damage is one. Okay, so it takes a hundred bullets to kill one. Uh, we can change that in another sim in another simulation just for fun. Thanks for watching the first video in the Desert RTS series. Um, next video, we're going to be uh, creating our own database, so we're not picking backing off of example uh, database. We're going to be making a unit factory so that uh, we can spawn units in, um, define in game how many we want to spawn and uh, also potentially where. And we're also going to be sending up uh, two other cool units like a helicopter and a tank. All right, well, I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Bye.